there are two things to say. The first, obviously, is that this is a shocking personal tragedy and everyone's thoughts are with Sam and his friends and his family. The second is that this event can't help but have a, a wider resonance as well. Salman has been and is known as a fearless advocate of creative thinkers, of writers, um, an advocate of freedom of speech, of freedom of choice, of freedom of thought, of democracy and open societies. He and his books have become iconic in that cause. And so to see him struck down um, by violence, not by someone who had an answer to his points, but by someone who senselessly violently wanted to silence his voice, really just illustrates one of the great dividing lines in our world today. I think that what Salmon has said himself in the last few years about the need to live freely, um, and that that is the best answer to terrorism and, and, and the threat of terrorism, you know, even if we're afraid to still be courageous, go about our lives, go about our lives in a free society, openly, democratically speaking, thinking, you know, talking, uh, discussing, arguing and living our lives is still the best response that we can possibly make to those people who want to close down society, silence dissent, silence criticism, and have us dragged into some sort of authoritarian society instead. And, you know, that way of living, unfortunately, and it shouldn't, but unfortunately, bears its risks. And obviously, those risks have been realised uh, for, for Salmon in this event. But it's still the best answer. The best answer to these sorts of threats to violence is still not to make war on them or to respond with violence, but to continue to live freely and to speak up. And I'm sure you know, that's what anyone inspired by Salmon's work would do. One of the permanently damaging effects of the violence and threats that we saw around the publication of the Satanic Verses was that over time, it did actually chill free expression. There were people who might have written who didn't. There were people who might have spoken up who didn't speak up. The threats of violence worked and a long-term very pernicious effect of, of the whole uh, satanic versus affair was that it also introduced this idea that somehow it was wrong to offend, it was wrong uh, to insult, even if you know, it was through an, such an inoffensive art form as a very literary novel, you know, which the, the satanic verses was. It wasn't a, a hateful book or a political book or a violent book. It was a novel, you know, dealing with themes of citizenship and, and, and transnational belonging um, and, and, and all the rest of it. And I think that that was a terrible effect, long term effect of the satanic verses affair. And of course, the worry about violent events like this latest one is that that too will have its effect, that it will silence those who would otherwise have spoken out. And although it's difficult, we have to really work hard to make sure it doesn't have that effect and to continue to speak out. You know, buy the satanic verses, read it, um, continue to talk about it, don't be afraid. Um, and, you know, if you've got an idea that's controversial or dissenting or critical, express it, say it, write it. And, you know, if everybody does that, then of course that's one way of honouring um, the, the right side of this argument, Salman Rushdie's side of this argument. Obviously the fact that I was hung over Salman's head for a very long time, you know, over, over 30 years, um, and so in a sense this could be seen, if it turns out this was the motivation, this could be seen as the, the long shadow of that. But I think there's a more immediate trend that's causing this too. I mean, the the enemies of free expression and of free thought and of, of free choice, and especially those enemies of those good things who would resort to violence in opposing them, are tremendously empowered now by the state of the world. You know, religious extremism, totalitarianism, ethnic nationalism. It's so easy now. All so many people are on a hair trigger um, and have become convinced that violence. Um, and, you know, division, hostility is the way to achieve their ends, that of course this can also be seen as part of that, part of that trend, a very damaging trend for, for those of us who believe in universal human rights, um, who believe in freedom of choice, who believe in freedom of expression, who believe in open societies, and I think that's, you know, that's part of the bigger context of what's happened.